with another uh, lure painting video. I've got a really interesting one for you guys today. We're going to be doing like a uh, paint splatter pattern. I did one the other day, uh, playing around with it. It turned out really cool. Then I went fishing with it, had a bite, went to set the hook, smoked it on the rocks, and uh, busted the lip off of it. But Here's what the paint pattern looks like. I think it, it's uh, definitely unique. I really like it. So we're going to go ahead and do it again on this uh, deeper diver. And what we're going to do, I already got it started with the exact same colors on this one. Uh, so we're gonna make one that's identical in colors to this one. And then we're also going to do one that's got, uh, goes from like the chartreuse to a green. So this one will be identical to that one, and this one will be like uh, greens instead of blacks. So uh, we're going to go ahead and do this one all the way through. I'll, I'll film this whole one, and I'll just show you guys what this one looks like at the end. So once again, thanks for uh, tuning in, and I hope you guys enjoy. All right, so the other thing I should have mentioned on this one, I want it to be kind of a see-through. So I want all my base colors to be see-through, so we're not going to be doing a white primer on this one. Whereas this one was primered white, I did the chartreuse, did, uh, or it's the fluorescent yellow is what they're calling it. Uh, so we did that on the belly, and then we did, of course, pearlized orange, or tangerine. Did tangerine along the side of the belly, and then we did uh, opaque red along the back. And so I'm going to kind of do along the same design, only we're going to start off with the uh, Fluorescent yellow, that's a hard word to say for me for some reason. Fluorescent? Fluorescent? Fluorescent. We're going to do this really bright yellow uh, on the belly of this one. We'll move over to a pearl lime green, and then we'll use uh, the inks on the back, and then we'll probably do black for the speckles again. So we're going to go and get started with the, oh goodness, almost dropped it, I'm trying to throw it. The bright yellow. Get that in the airbrush here. We're just going to do it along the belly. <clears throat> Again, I'll do a couple coats of it. This is a really, really light color, so I want it to show up pretty well. It's also very thin, so i got to hit it with the hair dryer a couple times. Anybody that paint or uh, fishes with lures, I've, I've noticed a lot of them have that see-through aspect to it. Is there any benefits to that? I've never, uh, never really fished with one, nor have I painted any like that. So this is kind of a first for me. So now we are graduating to the uh, pearlized green, pearlized lime. We're just going to do that along the belly or the side of it. And I'm going to go ahead and carry it along the back too. There's not a whole lot of difference between the two, but maybe once the clear coat goes on, you'll be able to notice it better. This will all be covered in speckles later anyways. All right, so we're gonna call that good there, and then we are going to switch over to the Olive Green Deep ink. All right, here goes the Olive Green. I'm going to go ahead and spray this green up around the eyes. Ink is super thin. Alright, so that's as simple as that. We kind of got both of these to the same stage as far as ready for the stencil. Um, the stencil I'm going to be using is one from Hobby Lobby, I believe. I got 
find it, and then uh, then we'll talk about it. That's good plan of action. Give me a second here. All right, so I found this stencil. It is part of the Jim Holtz collection. Not really sure what that necessarily means, but there it is if you're looking for it. Uh, it's got a whole bunch of different paint splatters on it, and as you can see, there's the couple that I've used. I've had this hanging in my shop for probably a year now, and I just now actually started using it. And I absolutely love the way it turned out on this other lure, uh, so which is why we're doing it again. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of pick out, probably just use the same ones I've already used, just the different little sections of it. And I just lay it on there, spray some black, take it off, and just kind of build it up till, uh, till it makes me happy. And afterwards we'll use the paintbrush and put some really fine splatters on there. I don't know if you guys can see that uh, on camera or not, but you'll see it in the close-ups later. Uh, so without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get started on that. Like I said, we're going to be doing the same type of pattern on both of these, uh, but I'm only going to be showing it on the green one. That way we're not uh, being, getting repetitive and boring. Uh, so let's hop right into it. I'm going to be doing it with uh, just an opaque, maybe we should do pearlized. Mm, well, we're going to do a pearlized, pearlized black. And uh, we're going to be doing that for the spatters. And then... Uh, yeah, so let's do it. All right, so a couple things if you haven't ever used a stencil before. Uh, you gotta be careful not to scratch it, The this paint that's already on there. I have before sprayed this with like a normal polyurethane spray clear coat just to kind of protect it. Um, I think with this pattern, it's so easy to cover up mistakes if I do mess up that I'm not gonna worry about doing that step and it would take forever to dry and then I wouldn't get the video done today. Um, so all I'm going to be doing is laying the stencil on there and spraying some black, probably hit it with the hair dryer and uh, go until we think it looks good. So we'll start with uh, this little strip right here. So there's a little bit showing up through. Another thing that might be really fun to experiment with this pattern is doing just like a white base on a lure. And then spraying all different colors, so it'd be like a whole mess of colors with the with the pattern that we're got going. On. Another thing I noticed is if you spray some that are lighter in the background and then spray some darker ones on top, it really gives it a lot of depth. So like the less dark ones look like they're further away and the darker ones look like they're closer. So once the clear coat goes on, it really gives it some cool dimension to it. I'm gonna do some small ones up here by the gill plate. All right, so th this is what I look for whenever I'm doing this. You can see how I got dark, dark, and then up here it's really dark. I'm gonna go in right in this negative area and add some smaller ones that way. So right in this negative area and right in here and then probably right in there. That way it's nice and uh, even all the way across. I sprayed that one pretty thick, so I'm going to hit it with the hair dryer, that way I'm not smudging the paint. You know, if I did it uh, white and black, we'd have a Holstein cow. I'm actually really liking the way that looks. I don't know if you guys can see all of them on the camera or not. Uh, we might come down in here on the belly and do a couple of real light ones. And then what I'm going to do is go ahead and carry the pattern on over to the back and then we'll spray the back black. 
black like we do on most of them. Uh, I just kind of think it helps tie it in the two sides. I'm sure I took the hooks off that before I kept playing with it. Hooks are sharp, in case you're wondering. Also kind of looks like a bird egg, like a robin egg or something. Alright, so there's what one side looks like currently. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and flip it over and repeat it on the other side. On this first one I did, I tried really hard to have like the same pattern on both sides. And I just don't know if that's really necessary. So I'm not going to worry about it on this one. I don't think that the fish will say, oh, it's not symmetrical. So I'm not going to bite it. I think they're going to react to how cool it is and hope that they can eat it. Hopefully. That's the goal anyways. Said every lure painter ever. I will say this is rather challenging to hold it and spray. The cool thing is this pattern isn't uh, super precise, so if we really mess up, we'll just add another splotch in. Alright, we're going to go in and add some uh, smaller ones and do some lighter ones. Hit the gill plate up here. Let's do a little group of small ones right here. Can't see that at all. There you go. I do, uh, I want to make sure that it's fairly even as far as thickness of speckles on both sides. I don't want real side, one side to be really dark and one side to be really light, so I'm going to check for that and as far as consistency goes. And it kind of looks like we might want to add a couple more, like kind of in this area, and maybe up here on the gill plate, another darker one right there. So we'll go ahead and do that. So there's what that's looking like. I'm starting to think uh, with this green one, it might look pretty cool to add some orange into it. Kind of like that pumpkin seed color that is perfect for bass. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and spray the dots on this one. And then since we have black loaded up in the brush, we'll spray the back of it and around the eyes. And then I think we'll go back in on the green one and add some of that the orange speckles into it. So. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do this one with the speckles, and then we'll be back. Alright, so since we got the black loaded up in the brush, I'm going to go ahead and run it along the, the back of it. It is a pearlized black, so it'll take a couple coats to get it dark like I want it. And of course, up around the eyes and the nose. So that's what that one looks like. 
we will uh, clean out the brush and get the orange put in and then we'll come back and add a couple orange speckles we might even do a little bit on the belly while we're at it might as well all right so we got both lures at the same stage right now we got all the black speckles painted on and uh, around the eyes and along the back I'm gonna go ahead and take uh, the green one that we've been working on and I'm going to grab some of the pearl tangerine and we're just going to do a couple here and there. I'm not going to do it very thick because I don't want it to be a real harsh shape but uh, once the clear coat goes on it'll reflect some of this orange color. I think that'll tie in good with like that pumpkin seed color that we all use all the time and we all know is the best color ever at least in my book. Alright so I'm just going to do the same steps as we are doing earlier only with the pearl orange. So there you go. You can't really see it that good right now, but I guarantee you will see it later. Uh, so I'm going to repeat the same process on the other side. And I think we'll go ahead and do some just along the back too. That way it's got that extra dimension to it. You guys gotta tell me when you can't see it. Alright, just some little guys up here on the nose. Alright, and as you can, I don't know if you can see that, but uh, I scratched just above the eye with the stencil, but that's alright. I'll just put some more black over it and no one will know. It'll be our little secret. Alright, I think after I touch that up, uh, oh yeah, I was going to spray some right here along the belly. Just as simple as that. I always say that, but then I do more, but you know. All right, now, now we are done spraying and ready to pick out our eyes. And we will be right back momentarily. All right, so we are ready to put some eyes in. So one thing I didn't pay attention to when I ordered these, uh, these lure blanks was that the eyes are actually slanted. They have this line in them and all my eyes that I have are round. But I found a nice simple solution. All you gotta do is take whatever eye you're gonna use and cut a chunk of it off. Pretty simple, and I like cutting things. So on uh, the orange lure, we're going to be putting some yellow eyes, some bright yellow eyes, and on the green lure, we're gonna do some like orange colored. So what I'm gonna do is just take a little bitty section of this eye off. That way it kind of matches the shape of the lure. And this is super small. A yeah, sharp Zacto knife helps with this. And there you have it. So all I did was cut off the top part of it. It went launching, but that's all right. And then what I'm going to do is I'll just glue that into place, and uh, no one will ever know. We got not got a lot of those on this one. Alright, so what I'm going to do is uh, repeat that for all of these, and then we'll put some clear coat on these bad boys and show you guys what they look like when they're all finished up. So here's the lures all finished up with the clear coat on them. Uh, 
I'm, I'm really, really glad we went ahead and sprayed some orange onto the, the green and black lure. I think it really helped out with its design pattern. This is definitely a really fun pattern to do, really simple, and there's, I feel like there's so many variations that you could do. So I'll be revisiting this pattern again for sure. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed another lure painting video. If you guys have any suggestions or ideas that would make these videos better, please let me know. I'm looking to improve them and make the best lure painting videos that I possibly can. So thank you so much for watching, and we will see you guys next time with another video.